Hi friends, welcome to the Wild Side. I'm Steve Hall. We've told you many times over the years about residential development and its conflict with habitat for wildlife. Well, now we have a story of homeowners happily sharing a mountain and living in harmony with endangered aquatic species. But they share a common enemy brought in by outsiders, and there's an effort underway to get the trash out of the neighborhood. Welcome to Sequatchie Mountain, where people and nature live in harmony with spectacular scenery at the top. They call it the million dollar view here, and it, it's just, I can't describe it, I'll have to show it, to you, but it's a gorgeous view. And a freshwater spring flowing into a cave at the bottom, part of a state natural area. That's a natural, beautiful place. And, uh, I wouldn't give it up for anything. After I was here a few years, I picked up a history book that was of old Sequatchie and old Marion County, and they talked about in 1900, 1901, the train ran from Chattanooga to Sequatchie and people would come down to Sequatchie and picnic at Waterfall Cove. Today, well past a century later, in between the high point where people like Art Rask build their dream homes and the base of the mountain, a habitat for endangered wildlife, Sequatchie Mountain Road has become a very long and very large illegal landfill. And on this bitterly cold morning, volunteers are signed up for a cleanup organized by Green Steps with its mission to educate, encourage, and enable communities to eradicate litter. Our uh, road is sectioned into three zones right now. We have zone one, which is pretty easy, pretty flat. Uh, zone two is only for repellers, climbers, people who can really deal with difficult terrain. In the 50s and 60s, this is a place that a lot of people just pull up here and dump their trash on the other side of the mountain. And, uh, because there was really no uh, landfills or garbage pickup that time in the county. And this has just accumulated over 30, 40 years. We decided to do a cleanup up here uh, thanks to Art Rask. He got in touch with me and he was like, you have to do this area, it is a mess. <laughs> and it is, but uh, it's a perfect opportunity for us to really get the community together and clean up. Phil Collins, Phil Roy, transport everybody. Safety is the first thing. Philip Collins, an outspoken local volunteer known in these parts as Phil Roy, gives the cleanup crews a ride up and down the mountain. It's going to take a lot of work, but the outcome today, everybody put together, uh, I'm going to be asking lots of people tonight to join me tomorrow. I think it would uh, be true blue. Support your community, make a difference. In zone two of the cleanup section with its treacherous terrain, a Tennessee State Park ranger with a chainsaw helps clear a safer path for experienced cave explorers who are rigging ropes to pull out heavy trash, including lots of big tires. First of all, we're uniquely qualified to do this because rope work is what we do. This is a modified rescue haul system. When we would have to haul someone who's injured up a cliff or out of a pit, there we pull with manpower, here we pull with a truck. So we've got all the safety gear to do this safely. Our goal is watershed protection, thereby cave protection. So we act as a resource to any other group wanting to do this type of watershed cleanup. Everything from just regular, you know, household item trash, you know, just trash that you'd see every day in your bins, uh, to washing machines, to I think someone said there were over 500 tires down there. Yeah. Um, so bulky items to baby diapers. <laughs> Watershed protection and caving go hand in hand because we see all of this stuff underground. Water resources are probably our biggest environmental issue right now. Uh, global climate change, yes, it's a problem, but we're gonna run out of clean drinking water long before it gets too hot to live on this planet. When it rains, the waterfalls in that valley, there'll be five, four or five different waterfalls that flow through that valley. So it's just beautiful. And as dye trace research has proven, these flowing streams roll downhill and carry litter, sediment, and potentially poisonous fluids right into Owen Springs and Sequatchie Cave. That causes some worry for state zoologist David Withers, who has the job of helping protect two rare aquatic species living in the cave waters. 
The one that probably has the most recognition is the royal snail, which is a federally endangered aquatic snail. It's a very wee teeny thing about the size of a BB and was featured back in 2001 on this very show from this very spot. Uh, that remains a species of concern because it's only known from two places in the world, right here at the type locality uh, at Sequatchie Cave and then down the road at, at Blue Spring in Jasper. The other rare species is the Sequatchie caddisfly, found only here and a few other springs all very close to one another in the southern part of the Cumberland Plateau. Its stick-like larvae is especially vulnerable to dirty water. Those two endangered species down there, I think there's just a couple places in the United States that they live, and this is one of them. So uh, we want to make sure we protect those species down there. We got a bucket with some water in it. The watershed cleanup comes as a bonus to the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation, which is responsible for this natural area. But significant groundwork surrounding the springs and cave has also been a winter project. So what we've begun here uh, is a water quality improvement project, uh, both for the animals that live here and also for the people downstream that draw water from the site. Ultimately, this, this water flows into the Sequatchie River and is used in part by the Jasper water system. Even more so, the work helps minimize the impact of humans on the natural area. A sediment trap basin has been built to help filter runoff from surrounding roadways and the mountain to handle a problem that David Withers says was historically made worse by an old logging operation. The creek banks have also been stabilized with parking added to accommodate more visitors. And while cleanup crews and construction teams are here for only a short time, Phil Roy comes here a lot. He calls himself the steward of Sequatchie Cave Natural Area, which means he works for free. I take care of the trash, the weed eating, the mowing, and leaf blowing, and all the details in between that. Somebody's got to stop and make a difference. And that's why I volunteer my time and effort, and I work really hard down here. And all this effort helps increase the odds of a better balance between man and nature. And that's the ultimate goal. What we want to leave people here is something that we, granted we have the rare species and we're very proud of that. We want them to come learn about that. But we also want people to be able to come here and bring their watermelons on Saturdays and leave them in the creek so they can cut them up on Sundays for, for picnics and such and family reunions. This is what this place was known for and it should be again. Our website, wildsidetv.com, will guide you to more information about the Sequatchie Cave natural area. While we were there on the mountain, we heard some complaints about a lack of recycling opportunities in the community. Well, that complaint has been heard. Through a grant from the Division of Solid Waste, a recycling bin has been placed right there in the natural area. Green Steps will handle pickup and delivery to a recycling facility in Chattanooga.